In this lecture, we're going to look at properties of vector line integrals, and then we'll talk about circulation integrals. We'll do two examples of those. Our first property is the same as a property that we saw for scalar line integrals. And that is, if you and your roommate both parametrize the same curve C in the same direction, using two parametrizations R1 of T and R2 of T, then you should get the same vector line integral. So if you do the vector line integral with the R1 description, that will return you the same number that you would get if you use the R2 description. The next property is the exact reverse of a property that we saw for scalar line integrals, which is that direction matters. So if you parametrize what looks like the same curve C, but you move in opposite directions, then you're gonna flip the sign. So the vector line integral of f according to the r1 description would be negative the vector line integral of f with respect to the r2 description if it's moving in the opposite direction. Like property number one, property number three is also the same as a property that we saw for scalar line integration. And that is if you can write your curve perhaps using two pieces. Say you can parametrize these two pieces c1 and c2 and then write your curve as this kind of sum c1 plus c2, meaning take c1 and then take c2. Then if you want to compute the vector line integral of some vector field f along c, you can just do it along c1 and c2 and then add them together. Okay, so you can break your curve up into pieces. A closed curve is one where the end comes around and meets the beginning, like this. So if we have parametrized this, we would find that r of b equals r of a. If we do a vector line integral along a closed curve, then it's called a circulation integral. And we do this so often that it merits its own symbol. You may write these as a vector line integral, but then add this kind of circulation symbol. That's an optional change, but it's a nice thing to do if you recognize that the vector line integral you're doing is actually a circulation integral. It communicates to whoever is reading your calculation that the curve C is a special one. It's a closed curve. Just like with scalar line integrals, though, we don't want curves that intersect each other a lot. A closed curve is great, but we also want to have simple closed curves only, meaning that we don't have self-intersections along the way. So if we are looking in terms of the parametrization, it's okay if R of B equals R of A. Otherwise, we should never revisit the same place on a curve. For the rest of this lecture, I just want to do two circulation integrals. There's nothing really new here because we're just going to do vector line integrals where the curve happens to close up. So the four steps we're going to do are exactly the same as we've already done. It just so happens that R of B equals R of A for these two computations. Okay, so our first step is to identify our parametrization R of T. In this case, we're going once around the unit circle. Next, we want to plug our parametrization into our vector field. So evaluating this vector field along this path, we get negative sine of t divided by cosine squared plus sine squared, comma, cosine of t divided by cosine squared plus sine squared. The denominators are one, so this simplifies to just negative sine of t, cosine of t. Okay, now let's compute the velocity vector, r prime of t. We have everything we need to evaluate this circulation integral. Here I'll use the new notation just to call your attention to the fact that this is a special type of curve. It's a closed curve, so we're doing a circulation integral, but we compute it the same way. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi. The dot product of negative sine t cosine t with negative sine t cosine t. That integrand is going to be sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t, which is 1. So overall, this circulation integral is 2 pi. Here's a picture of this vector field together with the curve. Notice this vector field consists only of unit length vectors except at the origin where it's undefined. So we have a hole in the domain of this vector field. Everywhere else to any point x comma y, which is not the origin, we attach a unit length vector. And the picture that forms is one of clockwise rotation. That agrees with the direction of motion for this path. 
So overall, we computed a positive circulation. Now let's compute the circulation of f of x and y equals 2xy comma x squared around the same path. First step is the same as before. We have the same path. Now we evaluate our vector field along the path. We'll get 2 cosine t sine t comma cosine squared. For our third step, we have the same velocity vector as before, so now we're ready to compute this circulation integral. It will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2 cosine t sine t cosine squared dot negative sine t cosine t. And then we integrate that with respect to t. Okay, let's do this dot product. We will have negative 2 times cosine times sine squared plus cosine cubed. Let me take cosine cubed and write that as cosine times cosine squared. And then I can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. So there I will pick up another negative 1 cosine of t times sine squared. And so I'm going to write this integral now as the integral from 0 to 2 pi, negative 3 cosine of t times sine squared of t. And then I'll break off into a separate integral, just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of t. Okay, let me give myself a little bit more room. The second integral is 0, because from 0 to 2 pi we have one full period for cosine that has equal parts of positive and negative area under the curve. If you don't see it that way, you can just anti-differentiate in the usual way. For the first integral, I'm going to let u be sine of t, so that du will be cosine t dt. So after u substitution, the integrand is going to be negative 3 u squared du. And then I need to change my bounds. And when I plug 0 into sine of t, u is 0. And likewise, when I plug in 2 pi, I get 0. So here we're integrating from 0 to 0. Overall, this integral is 0. So here we say this vector field has zero circulation around this curve. Turns out I secretly knew that was going to be the answer all along, in part because I'd already worked out the calculation, but also because f is a conservative vector field. And what we'll talk about next is that conservative vector fields always have zero circulation. All right, so I'm looking forward to that. See you next time.